Thanks everybody for coming. Um, so we're going to talk about school funding, and uh, I want to talk about a couple of things that uh, kind of brought me to school funding. Uh, first of all, like uh, my name is Steve Ross. My web address is buybink.com. Um, that's the easiest way to get to me. There's also contact information that I'll give you at the end of the presentation. Um, I'm not originally from Memphis. I grew up in Little Rock. Uh, both of my parents are teachers. In fact, everybody in my family, except for one uncle who sells Amway, is a teacher. <laughs> I think we all have that one uncle. Um, one, way, one way or another. Um, I've lived here for about nine years. Um, and uh, I, I really I moved to Memphis for a job, and I didn't know how long I was going to stay. I was actually looking at moving out west where my brother lives. Um, to uh, kind of be closer to him and his daughter. Uh, but after about two years, I decided to stay. I made a conscious decision to stay in Memphis because uh, there's a lot of potential here and there's a lot of opportunity to do good here. And I, I, I decided that this is where I needed to stay. So um, obviously with uh, teachers as parents, um, education is a big topic around the dinner table and it's been a big part of my life uh, for as long as I can remember. Um, and so, uh, and then another thing kind of walked into my life that uh, caused me to uh, really need to pay more attention to education as well, and that's Frances. She is six. She's in kindergarten at um, Idlewild Elementary School. She's a rock star um, and a princess at the same time. Um, but uh, she's, she's one of the reasons that I really have focused on education uh, recently. I've been looking at this for about four years now, though I haven't written a lot about it because it's a pretty pretty thick topic to, to, to understand. Even with somebody with an education background, I know my parents are sick of me asking them questions about school funding in different places and how it works. And my dad was a principal in a lot of rural school districts. It's a very different funding situation there than it is, say, in a metropolitan school district. So just kind of getting your head wrapped around that. Um, I'm not an academic. Really, I like to, I, I, you know, I don't have a degree. I'm a guy who has too much time. Um, or uses too much time, I think is what Ellen would probably argue. Um, <laughs> uh, I spend a lot of time on this uh, because I think it's important, not only because I'm kind of an information hog, but, but because I think it's good for people to understand uh, kind of the things behind things and what's really going on. Um, so we're gonna talk about the size of the budget um, obviously, uh, and by size I mean the actual physical size of the budget. <laughs> Last year's budget for both school districts was 831 pages. Um, the majority of that was Memphis City Schools, not because of, uh, because of the detail that they put into it. Every line item in their budget is, is explained on some level. Now that explanation may, may not satisfy you or may not actually give you any new information, but it's very detailed. The, the Shelby County School District's uh, budget is, is kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. I didn't bring it with me, but I'll post it on the website so that you can have a, have a look at it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just a little bit more difficult to get into the numbers on that level. Um, so if we're going to demystify the budget, you know, budgets scare people. Uh, your personal budgets at home, we all do it at home, but they scare us at home, too. We don't want to think about it. We, uh, you know, we know, okay, the mortgage is this much, and the car payment is this much, and child care is going to be this much, and, oh, look, I've got a nickel, you know, left over. And that's kind of what we do with our budgets at home. Um, it's not sexy. There's nothing sexy about numbers. Um, you can put clothes on them. They're not, I tried. Um, and it, it seems overwhelming, and I'm, I put way too many things. So we're going to try and break this down. Um, so... Where are we in the, this year's budget? Well, <laughs> right now we don't really know. Um, um, I think on Thursday, uh, 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 Superintendent Hobson basically told the, the school board that if they didn't make a decision, they weren't going to get a budget. Um, and that's kind of where we're at right now. We, th there are some decisions that need to be made. And so I'd hoped to walk into this session today with next year's budget, proposed budget at least, in my hand so that I could show you kind of a compare and contrast between previous year's funding and this year's funding. Because I don't have that, um, we're going to focus on 
what we've done historically, particularly last year, just to kind of get an idea of how much uh, we're, we, uh, we dealt with um, in terms of all funding and then break it down into smaller funds and expenditures, kind of give a little bit of context to some things. So some basic terms that we all probably know, revenue, which is all the money that we collect. Obviously, uh, schools don't uh, set a tax rate. They ask, uh, <laughs> they ask other governments for money. Um, there are different ways that that happens, and I'll go into that a little bit. And obviously, expenditures, I think we all uh, understand from probably the conditions of our bank accounts what expenditures are. Um, so, uh, with that, this is the amount of money that we spend on education in Shelby County. It's $1.5 billion is the, bu is the total budget. That's all funds for Shelby County. That's a lot of money, okay? That is... Um, that is 13.4% of all the revenue that the state of Tennessee collects. That is, now that's not the, the total budget of the state of Tennessee, that's just the revenue they collect, okay? It's 129% of the Shelby County uh, government budget, and it's 236% of the Memphis budget. So where does this money come from, <laughs> right? I mean, I guess that's the question. It, uh, well, it, it, it goes to two different things. First, it goes to the general fund, which goes to the business of actually educating kids. Then we get some money in a special revenue fund. It's mostly federal, not, uh, federal dollars, and we'll talk a little bit about that. The general fund is funded by the state and local governments, primarily, and there's a process that goes into that. Um, now, there's another fund called the Capital Projects Fund. I'm not really going to deal with that right now because... Uh, we don't know what that's going to look like with the new, uh, the new system. And the capital projects that are currently in place for uh, both the county and the city schools, well, I mean, you're not really going to stop that. That's going to continue. Uh, nobody's going to have to, well, I mean, I don't know, I guess maybe somebody might have to build a building, but I, I can't imagine that they would. Um, so in terms of general fund revenue, we, get, we have four, four sources. The state is by far the largest single source of funding. Uh, local government. Um, is the second largest source, and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more about where that money comes from. The federal government is a very distant third, and other, which is grant funding, like the Bill and Melinda Gates money, or other things like that, is, is, is the fourth uh, source. Um, the state and local government funding is calculated, I think called the Basic Education Program. Every year, the, Department of the State Department of Education puts together a formula that says, this is how much, based on the number of students that are enrolled, the cost of living, the cost of this, the cost of that, in different communities all over the state, this is how much each county is going to receive from the state government, and this is a minimum number that, the count, that their local counties must provide from property taxes, okay? A minimum number. So, if we look at last year's um, funding, for we'll just go from the total column, you see that the state provided about, about half of the general fund. <laughs> county property taxes were about a third. And then pro county sales tax, which is not figured into BEP. The state says, and I may be getting a little ahead of myself, no. Uh, the state says that if you are going to levy a local option sales tax, the price for that is that half of it must go to education. And that doesn't count in how much your maintenance of effort is. I think everybody remembers maintenance of effort from uh, 2008 and to today. Um, so that's where the money's coming from. Uh, I've got city of Memphis in here, obviously. That was uh, last year was the last year that uh, the city is uh, required to contribute. What this kind of looks like is this. That's where our money comes, uh, goes to. Um, what it really looks like, I think this is probably the most instructive, is the vast majority of it comes from the county and uh, the state. I think a lot of folks believe, you know, federal is in there at 1%, um, actually, I believe. Yeah, 1%. Uh, that's actually city of Memphis. The color is really similar. Um, and I think a lot of folks think that, that the federal government really contributes a lot more to education. They don't for the basic, um, the actual educating of children. They do fund a great deal in terms of supports for that education, 
And that's something that we'll get into as we go into special revenue. Special revenue, I like to call it the alphabet, alphabet soup fund. If you look at um, all the different things that are funded uh, by special revenue, it's, it's, a, it's a series of you know, acronyms, one after the other, uh, that are kind of difficult to, uh, to understand. They, they fund specific programs, and that money comes with strings attached. Um, the primary things that, that, that are funded are nutrition. Obviously, a free and reduced lunch is a, part, is a, is a special revenue fund of its own. Um, there's a lot of funding for special needs students, whether they have a learning disability or some kind of other disability, or maybe they've just fallen behind. Uh, maybe they came into school uh, unprepared for uh, you know, kindergarten. People don't think you need to prepare for kindergarten. I found out uh, in start, you know, stunning to me that, yes, uh, you know, kids actually have to come in knowing things. Kindergarten. When I was a kid, you came in and you learned everything in kindergarten. Now, when you come in, you have to already know all your ABCs and your one, two, threes and your colors and your this. And um, you know, if your parent has, has called you uh, by a by a nickname for your whole life, it, it, you may not know your name. Which actually, two children in my daughter's class didn't. Uh, they thought their name was a nickname. So that was it's. it's but anyway, all these things are funded. Pre-K is primarily funded by the state. That was a program that was started in the early 2000s, uh, a pilot program by Governor Bredesen. They've continued it, uh, though they haven't necessarily expanded it. Um, it's something that I believe the Transition Planning Committee said that they wanted to, uh, that they recommended going forward. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the, uh, in the presentation. But um, there's a whole lot of programs that go on there. That's how that money uh, is basically distributed. Um, so, what we 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 covered the the main areas of revenue. Okay, we've got the 1.5 billion dollars. About 1.2 of it uh, of our collections go to the actual business of educating, and about 280, you know, almost 300 million. Goes to a special revenue. Yes. But just to be clear, that 1.5 is all education, not that, that 1.5 is a combination of general fund revenue and special revenue. But it's all going for education. That or? is that is what I did was I took the I took last year's um, last year's budgets for both both districts, took all the revenue for from their uh, all revenue detail. And added them together. Right, but all of that is going to education. That's that's how okay. much they receive. Okay. That's how much they've reported that they receive. Yes, ma'am. Okay. How much of that, since we know that we have divided school systems, uh -huh. how much? What percentage of that goes to Shelby County, and what percentage goes to the city? And um, how is it broken down per student in each each um, district? It's right. So, uh, in terms of county property taxes, about sixty-eight percent of county property taxes go to uh, Memphis City Schools currently. Uh, about the remainder goes to county schools. That's based on the ratio of students in each district. Obviously, that's going to change as we have one district. Everybody will basically be getting the same. It's one of the kind of conflicts that's going on in some of the discussions with the school board. Um, and I, would, I, I do kind of want to touch on that. And you may remember back in February um, when uh, the county commission was kind of pressuring the school board to give them a number. And so they did. <laughs> and that number was $1.3 billion. Now, does that it, was... Does this, do these figures include these places like Bartlett, Millington, and Germantown? Sure, yeah. Shelby County. Yeah, so Shelby those County. are all Shelby County I know, schools. but those people want to... Right, but they haven't. Yeah. But they haven't. Yeah, they haven't yet. But are we figuring if they do? I mean, how are, how are you... Well, for the different? purposes of next... Next school year, they will not be able, look, they won't have time to establish school districts. They can vote on it July 16th if they so choose. And that seems to be the date that they've chosen. But, um, in but the terms earliest of, they can set up is 2014. 2014 is the soonest that, that, that it's going to happen there. So we are, at the very least, going to have one year, pretty much no matter what, of Still a... Like normal, of a of well, a county wide uh, district. Define normal. <laughs> right. And, 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 uh, just remember, normal normal doesn't seem like it's always shifting, but it is. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 